This video is going to show shaping hammers on a vertical piano, which many of us don't find the most fun task. So I don't know if it'll be fun, but it, this I think is a very efficient method. So I just want to point to this and say, what I've done already to this action is I've done the traveling where you start at rest, but then when you move the hammers forward, they are in a different position. Following the traveling, I've done the angle. And the last I did centering on the strings. So now these hammers are in a different position, therefore I need to do hammer shaping. So the other thing I wanted to say is everything that I'm doing, I wish I could say I thought of it myself, but I didn't. It's in the Piano Technician's Journal the May and June issues 2017. So that is fully described in this magazine, those articles. These blocks will support the action. So here's the dimensions. 12 by two by one inches thick. On this end, I have holes drilled one inch apart. So with this piece of wood, I can lay the action back, put these blocks underneath the action brackets. Now my action is really well supported. Then when I put the hammers on a two by four, everything is really firm. The first thing I do is I, I give the, the hammers a, an initial pre-voicing. I have the the voicing tool that has infinitely adjustable needles so I can have the needles just barely out or a lot of needle out. So what I'm gonna do is at this point of the hammer, I want the needle to come, oh, within a 16th inch of the core, so I'm gonna Oh, just like that. So that's how deeply I'm going to needle. For the purpose of this video, I'm just going to do three hammers. So I'm going to, you might need to go to the other side of me. I'm going to do three on the shoulders. One, two, right up to the string cuts, three, and then I do one over the top same angle. Three on the shoulders. One, two, three. One over the top. One more. One, two, three. And one over the top. Now you're wondering how am I going to do the other side. Here is how I'm going to do the other side. I'm going to add another block and it this just piece of scrap wood to raise the hammers. The dampers are still kind of in the way, so how I'm going to get the dampers out of the way. I've got all forms of little wooden blocks that I made that are just different thicknesses and they're in a wedge shape. So I just find the block that I can wedge underneath the damper lift rail so that with this wedge in place that lowers the dampers as much as possible. So this is without the wedge, that's with the wedge. And some people use felt, but I found the piece of wood much more effective. So now I'm gonna do the other side. One, two, three over the top. I do the needling first and the shaping second. So when I do the shaping, it takes away the 
needle holes. Shaping is next. I'm taking my wedge out of the damper. I use um, strips of sandpaper. I'm going to start on this side. I try to do an even, relatively even number, so this time I'm going to try and count to six. Do six strokes. Keeping um, finger pressure on the sandpaper in such a way that I'm not going to have any angles. Or sharp lines, I should say, and that I want the... Then anytime I finish a section, and now typically if I was doing this, I would do the whole section, but for the sake of this video, I'm just doing the three. I vacuum in between every change so that you're not dealing with tons of... Now, for the shaping, I want the hammers as high as possible. So once again, I have this block of wood that actually has an angle on it, and so I can decide which direction will act, will raise these hammers as much as possible. Dampers go down, and then I use a manila folder that I put over the action to keep um, hammer felt from going into the action. So now I've done this side, now I'm going to do the side that's facing me. You can see it, it every, your work area will stay really clean. But I'm still... Do a quick bit of vacuuming. Wedge out, hammers lower. And now I'm going to do one more, taking the sandpaper over the top. And then at this point, you know, you might decide that's enough or you might say, oh, I can still see more string cut than I want and do the process another time. But you can certainly see that the ones I've shaped are better than the ones I haven't. Um, also with this, when I'm done and everything is, is supported, I like to take a straight edge and look at the top of the, the hammers and just make sure that my filing cut really kept the top of the hammer straight, that I don't want to see any angles between the top of the hammer and whatever is my straight line. So that is how I shape hammers on a vertical piano. I hope you found it helpful. Have fun. Thanks.